Hey guys, I um, just want to thank everyone for watching my first video about wiring up mopeds. Um, when you wire up something, uh, rewire something, you're generally going to want to do that in three parts. You know, you're going to want to get an idea of what you need. This is my first, well, what I was explaining in the first video where I went over the components, gave you an idea of what everything does. And uh, then you're in the planning stages. You know, you're going to buy a wiring, you're going to work out how many different colors you need. And then after that, mock up the loom, uh, tape it up, use cable ties to work out the length of all the wiring, and then after that you can take it off, tape it up, and then fit it off or whatever, or you can fit it off and then take it off, you know, whatever, as long as it all fits up and is nice and tidy. So you want to mock it up first though, don't try and guess or anything. So, you know, you're going to want to run all your wiring out, okay, and then you get cable ties and cable it up, you know, tie it up. And then you can take it off and then tape it all together separately. Um, I'm going to do that later on. I might mock up the loom, but I'm going to take it off and I'm probably not going to fit everything up until I've done various other tasks, like um, while, uh, welding up this and putting various other things together so I don't get sparks on my uh, loom. So as I said, the second stage of wiring something up like this is you want to come up with a plan, make sure you understand how the wiring works so that you don't have any problems. Um, if you've done this a million times, yeah, sure, you don't have to worry about this. But uh, first time, especially for someone who's just watching a video online about how to wire up a moped, you might want to draw yourself a diagram, and I'll go through this with you, and this is what this video is going to be about. Um, I'm planning on using three different colors. I'm going to use red, uh, black, yellow, and probably blue, just so I can have uh, red and black for positive and negative, and then various wires that are switched. So I might have like yellow feeds and then the negative uh, switched part of the circuit in blue and then black for the actual earth of it. So, sorry, this start of the coil, uh, this first part of the uh, circuit here is already done, okay? So this is the part I was explaining in the last video where you've got your main earth, which is, uh, oh, bear with me here. No, it's not it. Oh, it's in here somewhere. I'll hear it. All right, yeah. Yeah, right, this one, so you know, it's your big main earth, goes to the battery, uh, battery, comes from here, down onto this bolt, and then the other one that goes onto uh, here, which is your relay circuit here, and then there's the other part of that, that's part of the circuit that I'm going to explain, that uh, is going to have odd colours on it, but that's okay, and that's the switch that turns it on and off, the uh, starter motor, so it's your go button to turn the, turn the scooter on. So, this part here is already done for me. Then we've got this wire, which is going to be a red wire. This goes to your key. And then your kill switch wiring here, which is going down to earth. It's an earth symbol. It's a battery symbol. They look very similar, but they're different. This one goes left to right, has two wire, two lines. Earth is uh, up and down, has three. Uh, how these work is, this is one cell. So each cell is like 2 volts or whatever, and then if you were going to make a 12 volt one, you would simply have 6 of them next to each other. But because I'm lazy, I didn't draw it like that. So that's actually a cell symbol, and then a battery is a group of them. So as you can see here, you got your kill switch from your CDI, it comes up, and this is the off position, down to earth, turns the scooter off. Your emergency off button, your kill switch button on your handlebars is here, same thing push that down to earth, screw turns off. Right, um, then yes. then um, you've got your on button, okay, your on position, sorry, not your on button, on position. So screw just turned on, and then invariably this is going to be off. Sorry about this diagram part here, I'm not really sure how to draw a key symbol. Basically what I'm saying is when this one is closed, this one is open and vice versa. So power comes along and then you've got your stator, CDI, off to the start relay, that's your button that pushes, uh, you push to start the moped. Uh, it'll be somewhere around. Um, it's, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the button that I had originally, so anyway. So you push this, power gets put onto the starter over here, like in the first video, okay? Same thing with the horn. All right, so your stator, 
you've got your 12 volts to your CDI, then you've got your stator timing wire to your CDI that goes to your spark, and then earth for your CDI, earth for your stator. I'm not sure, sometimes they connect these together and have one. And then power comes from the stator, and then goes down onto your lights, switched in the negative. Uh, sorry, there should be a little, see these? They're the light bulbs. <laughs> that's how you do the symbol for that. So obviously that's the headlamps and so forth. So there should be one of there and one of them in there, even though that's three different lights, but still. So that's your light circuit. And then you've got your indicators, left and right indicators. You know, mechanical thing really, but a wired wiring's always the same. And then that goes off to your flasher relay and, relay and down to earth, which is this. So if your indicators don't work, you may have something wrong with your flasher, flasher relay or your switch which is your indicator switch here. Okay. And then this is down to your spark plug. And then after that, it's pretty easy. You know, 12 volt goes onto the spark plug and then the spark plug, 12 volts, and then the earth, like I explained previously. And yeah, I think that's everything and that's how it works. It's pretty simple, really. So I just need to work out, I know obviously I need red, black, blue, and yellow. So blue is gonna be like these sort of negatively switched circuits, and then, uh, or maybe neg blue, uh, yellow to here, and then blue after the switch, and then black onto the grounding, and then red because this is all positive. Okay, so um, as I said in the first video, I made a real point of this. Your stator is disconnected from your battery. See how this whole part of the circuit right, is uh, connected to this battery through this part of your switch. Okay, so this is obviously a coil, so when this is closed, if it's not spinning, it's drawing power. And if it's open, it doesn't, okay? So, key off, you're not connecting the stator to the battery and then draining your battery or whatever, right? And then when you click this on, and then turn this off or just push the button, you're not going to want to sit there with your button for your um, kill switch push down, which you can't do anyway because it's a push button, whereas your key, if that turns off, this is off. And that means that this can't be connected to this for long periods of time without the moped running. Okay, so it's a safe way to do it. That's how, that's how that works. Uh, good. It's a good thing I've got a drawing here, so if there's anything else I missed out previously that I forgot to explain, whatever, um, just refer to this draw, draw, drawing. There are other drawings on the internet. They might be written in Chinese or something. So if you want an English one, uh, there it is. I will make this the thumbnail so that you can uh, have a quick look if you need to. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, so as I said, it's got three parts to this uh, wiring up job. The first part was obviously identify a component tree and work out how it all works. And then we're gonna design our loom and then after that, I'm going to mock it all up so that it fits up with the correct wiring. The wires are run out to the, run out to the right places, tied away, you know, temporarily. And then I'll tie it up enough so that I can take it off and then loom it all together with lots and lots of uh, tape. And then we'll put it inside, you know, flexi. What do you call it? It's not flexi conduit really. It's sort of like, um, sort of like heat shrink, but it doesn't shrink. And um, then after I've done that, I can put it aside, finish everything else off, all of the mechanical things and various other things. I'm nearly there. I've just got a few bits and bobs that I'm waiting on. One weld, uh, pump the tires up, you know, um, finish putting my springs together. And then after that, I might need to go out and get uh, my fancy big brakes that I'm going to get. Uh, they're in one of my videos, available on AliExpress for like 50 bucks. Mounting brackets and everything included. They're pretty cool, like what you get on a sports car. And uh, yeah. But uh, this is probably the most complicated part for people that are, you know, not uh, educated in how this works. Everything else is, uh, you know, simple stuff that anyone who's going to try this is probably going to know about anyway. So, lighting, it's all switched in the negative. Don't really know what else to show you. Um, hold, hold on for another wiring video where I will mock everything up and then I might go through some basic sort of procedures about how to um, 
make sure you've mocked it up correctly and then later on once I've finished everything I'm going to finish the scooter off by wiring it up and making it run so there will be a big video and then uh, that will have information on how to crimp things together and I might have to do a bit of soldering so uh, yeah here's a picture of how it works uh, hopefully that cleared up any information that was missing from the first video and provides you with a good process to do a quality job of your project. Uh, on an unrelated matter, I need to get some spring clamps to uh, finish off doing these. It, this is all finished really, all I really need to do is um, uh, put a a, a nylock bolt in the bottom and then get some uh, paint on them and then use uh, some uh, spring clamps to get them to actually go on. I've nicely shaved all that down there. I might have to use some uh, nicer sandpaper to get it to slide back and forward. If it wasn't on the stands I could show you but it does slide up and down properly and it is on the proper angle really now I think. I think that's a pretty good angle. If it, when it sits down it sits more forward. Um, if anything I may have to put a couple more threads but it's getting there. You know, it's like most of the way with those. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that too, how that turned out. It definitely looks better than the standard uh, stupid things here. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, I'm glad to answer things as long as it's a good question and not a please come and fix it for me question. All right, have a good day, everyone.